कर्णे शृणुयाम देवा भद्र पश्येक्षजत्रा स्थिंग सस्तनु व्यशेम देवितयदायु स्वस्ति न इंद्रो वृद्धश्रवा स्वस्ति न पूषा विश्व स्वस्ति नस्ताक्षो अरिष्टने स्वस्ति नो बृहस्पतिर्दा ओ शातिशाशा हरि ओ Dear friends, we have been studying the Mundaka Upanishad, and we have studied the first two Mundakas, and we have started the third Mundaka. Now, there is something which I had. I would like to tell you right now. we are like to tell you right now mundaka means an instrument by means of which you perform the act known as mundana the instrument for mundana activity is mundaka mundana means to shave clean generally the swamis are supposed to be absolutely clean headed shaven totally so for the all practical purpose there is a going feeling that the mundaka upanishad is specially earmarked for sanyasis that is why he starts from living in the world attached to the world involved with the world and you grow in your maturity you have come to hear that there is something which is absolute which is immutable which is infinite which is eternal you have come to hear it in the market place but that was the culture of the society at that time so you develop a desire and then you go to a rishi maharishi angirasha the author of this mundaka and you ask him sir i hear so many things could you tell me specifically is there anything experiencing which nothing remains to be experienced any further the search for reality search for absolute search for truth comes to an end how by being and becoming one with that truth it is not an intellectual conviction that it stops there intellectual conviction is an indispensable stepping stone you must be absolutely clear sighted crystal clear this is what my goal is and i know what the goal is there's no haziness no nambi pambi there so crystal clear intellectual conviction has to be there that is clear sighted and with an unshakable rock solid discipline will power you reeducate yourself especially your sense organs and your movements by means of which you will be able to be one with that sublime go there is no separateness you become one with it that is how the mundaka starts but the amount of renunciation 
amount of discrimination, amount of emotional will, emotional involvement, and a rock solid determined willpower. All these four is only available to a man who is prepared to give his all to this pursuit. There is no halfway house. Therefore, to be a whole timer at that age, before Swami Vivekananda and Sri Ramakrishna came, pre-Ramakrishna era, before that, sannyas was a concept where it was a total renunciation from the world. A mendicant monk, a roaming monk, unattached, he is not supposed to be anywhere more than three nights, lest he develops an attachment. He will not ask food for more than three times in three different houses. If he doesn't get any, he will starve because he knows that is God's will. At the same time, he will not stop by being a burden to a householder to have a full meal from her place or his place. He has to divide it into seven different places. All these rules were there to develop that indomitable willpower, de emotional dependence on God, and a clear-sighted, well-disciplined management of one's own personality. This whole timer who has no other involvement but this is a Swami, a Yati. Yati means Sangyatabhan Purusha, a man who has all his passions and his faculties totally under his control. His Antakarana, inner organ, and his five sense organs and five active organs are as disciplined as a well-disciplined dog. That is why, dear, in the fifth shloka, you will hear yataya, the word yataya. Yata is plural of yati, and yati is a sannyasi. Now, there are so many wool-headed ideas about sannyasi. One who is shaven, one who wears a particular color of cloth, gerua cloth, one who has a danda and a kamandalu, one who doesn't have a fixed residence. All these things are said. But what is the inner meaning of a sannyasi? Samyak nyasaha sannyasa. Samyak means in totality. Nyasa means rejection. This is the literal meaning of the word sannyasa. Total rejection. Now, you have two words in English. Subjugation and sublimation. When we translate samyak, nyasa, sannyasi, we have to be honest to the English language. Samyak means in totality, in a righteous manner, not woolly-headed idea. In totality, you should know, you must reject. What do you reject? You are a papa. You are a yati, you are a sannyasi. What do you reject? What have you to reject? You don't earn anything. You don't have any property. You don't have any... What do you reject? 
the rejection is attachment and involvement with this world. Now, when we say reject, that means we are stifling our emotions. And secondly, we accept it and then we say, I reject you. But this acceptance is not acceptable. This involvement and then you say, I am not involved, is not acceptable. So what does it mean? It means it is not subjugation that you forcefully de-emotionalize yourself. That is not subjugation is you are suppressing it. I will not, I will not see, I will not see. The desire to see is throbbing in you, is erupting in you like a volcano, but you are shutting your eyes, I will not see, I will not see. This is subjugation. This is not what total rejection means. Total rejection means I have sublimated it. What is sublimation? I open my eyes as I am constituted. I see many. Many based on different names, different forms, different utilitarian value and of different qualities. These four differences are in me and which forces me to see the diversity of this world. And I enjoy that. Sannyasa, if it is literally said to be rejection, you first see, you appreciate, then you say, no, I won't see, I won't hear. That is not sannyasa. Sannyasa is sublimation. What is the sublimation part in our day-to-day -day life? It is said, which is an axiomatic truth, as mentioned in the scriptures, as mentioned by several incarnations, as mentioned by realized souls, as mentioned and taught to me by my guru. What is that? The whole world is nothing else but manifestation of the divine Brahman. Sublimation means you keep your eyes open. You see the chair. You call it a chair, that it is its name. Aesthetically, it is very well designed. It is a beautiful rupa form. It has certain qualities. Soft, smooth, agronomically designed, and it has a utilitarian value. As of now, my understanding stops there. But the process of sublimation is mentioned in the scriptures mentioned by incarnations, mentioned by realized soul, mentioned by your guru. What is that sublimated look? Though it appears to be so, though it has a name, though it has a form, though it has these qualities, though it has this utilitarian value, but the eternal thing is it exists. It is. That isness is eternal, 
the rest is all temporary, all tertiary, transitory. Isness is eternal. And that isness is the manifestation of the divine everywhere. So sublimation means you add a fifth dimension to your present day understanding, and the fifth dimension is awareness of the presence of the divine everywhere. That is what is samyak nyasa. You don't stop there. You go another step forward where the highest common factor is, is its existence. Sat Sarupata and awareness which goes along with Sat Sarupata is Chit Sarupata. Sat, Chit, Ananda, Swarup, Brahma. It's not an agent, it, it is true, real nature. So when it is said, it is meant for yatis, sannyasis, mundana, mundana kriyakarta, mundaka, upanishad. It is meant, but dear, it should not be understood in isolation. A person, now listen very carefully, the essence of karma yoga, how it helps you to be a sannyasi and samyak nyasa, how it helps you. It is a material, whether you are a brahmachari or a grihastha or a banaprastha or a sannyasi. Brahmacharya, Grihastha, Banaprastha, Sannyasa. Four stages of human life. Notwithstanding who you are. Say, for instance, you are a Brahmachari. A young man. Totally in control of your faculties. You have started developing, practicing, the ideals of becoming a karma yogi. What are you doing? You refuse to be attached to the attachment to the world. Nothing in this world attracts you, involves you, binds you down. Nothing. Your whole life is dedicated to service, which is nothing else but worship of the divine. Divine means nothing else but this manifest world. So all practical purposes, you are converting your sense of duty performing physically, emotionally, rationally, egoistically, you are converting the performance into worship. What does worship mean? Awareness of presence of the divine. So you are, in the real term of a sannyasi, you are, you have, or you are, you have renounced, or you are in the practice of divinizing your total existence in this world. For all practical purposes, you are a sannyasi. So instead of keeping the meaning of the word yati, sannyasi, confined into a class of people, let us now confine it into a class of attitude. That is what the attitude of a karma yogi, when he is spontaneously remembering God, without any effort, 
he has merged with him. Jat sthanam prapyati sanyasam. Jat sanyasam prapyati sthanam tad yoga irapi gavyate. He has told you in the second chapter, third chapter, this very chapter beginning, whatever position that a sannyasi arrives, the same position a karma yogi also arrives at. How? By attitudinal correction. Correction of the attitude with which you live in this body. This is what has to be very properly understood. Though the Mundaka Upanishad, according to literal meaning, is meant for that group of people who are proclaimed to be sannyasis, but don't confine to literal meaning, confine yourself to the intended meaning of the author. So, dears, in the third chapter, the closing chapter, Mundaka, third Mundaka, the closing Mundaka, there are probably 22 shlokas, first Khanda and second Khanda, first chapter, third Mundaka, second chapter, third Mundaka, and the 43rd close, closes, 43rd shloka closes. We have, we have done 49 shlokas. We'll continue with the 49th today. Now, in the beginning, the two shlokas are examples. The main theme of the example is, the main idea exemplified is, in this human body, as of today, before I am a realized soul, two personalities live in this body. One aspect of the personality is involved with the world. The other aspect of the personality is totally unattached. Two birds of the same plumage. In this body, there's a concept of Paramatman and there's a concept of Jivatman. The goal is the Jivatman should, through a discipline, lifelong rigid discipline, till one achieves, he should follow these disciplines and thereby he should wipe himself out of all attachment, all dirt and wrath, so that he realizes he is Paramatman himself. Jivatman is a mirage, is an image which has no legs to stand upon. The legs are my ignorance of my true original nature. The first two shlokas develop this. The third shloka develops how do you reach that goal? And what happens to you when you reach that goal? And where is that goal? High up in the cosmos? Where do I go? You go within yourself. The third shloka says, as and when the experiencer experiences the Lord God, Supreme Creator, Preserver and Destroyer of this universe, who is the cause of everything, who resides in me. What I know as I am is what is being described as thou art that. Tat tvam asi aham brahmasmi. Tada, at that time, this knower, this experience is totally washed out 
of all the adjectives and adjuncts that he has been holding to very dearly. I am <coughs> sorry, I am Sri Dharananda, I am this, I am this, I am this, I am this. All that is gone. Niranyanam paramam samyam upa eti. Upa eti. Upa eti, upa eti. Paramam samyam, sublime, supreme, tranquility, serenity, sobriety, undisturbability. Undisturbable it is. You cannot disturb. And you are taintless, unpolluted, unadulterated, pure self. This is the subjective description of what happens to you. But as I have told you from the Upanishad itself in a modernized manner, what is that? That a circle has 360 degrees, that is, the circumference of the circle has been divided into 360 parts. From each part, from equal distance, if you draw perpendicular, all the perpendiculars it will meet at a point which is known as the center of the circle. All 360 degrees or 360 radii meet at the same point known as the center of the circle. Now, there are quadrillion people in this world. Quadrillion people have quadrillion different purva, jarma, karma, phala. They have the karma phalas, purva, jarma, krita, all that they have done in their past lives, the accumulated effect of that is maintained in your chitta, your personality. And according to that, you accept a particular method to reach that goal. If you are honest, if you are determined, if you are clear-sighted, and if you are properly guided and not disillusioned, you will reach the goal, the method that you have followed. So we have a group of people who are known as knowers of the self, and all of them have reached the goal according to their samskaras, their karma phalas. Of that group, who is the best? The fifth, the fourth shloka tells you who is the best of them. What is that better and best comparison of superlative and comparative? What is it? After achieving that realization, how does that man or how does that woman, the lady, live in this world. If he or she decides, because of her past habit of sadhana, the process that she has followed to reach the goal, to be absolutely meditative, depending on total psychic control away from habitation, away from humans, in the hills and the dales and in the forests and the caves, you are always psychically controlling yourself. And you reach that goal. 
but because of these 40 years of continuous practice, after you realize, you live in this world because the body will fall off when your prarabdha is exhausted. So the body remains. How does the body remain? Doing good to the world, doing good to God's created world, or living all by himself or herself. We find people, according to Acharya Shankara, Vasantabhat Loka Hitaya Charantaha. They roam around in this world as the spring brings in new life after a weary winter. He brings new life to the world weary people. He has gone beyond this world of life and death and pleasure and pain. Having gone beyond, beyond being on the other shore, he extends his hand to hold you by your hand and take him to the shore. Vasanta bat liko hitaya charantaha tvirna swayam bhima bhava arnavam He has gone across the sea. Janan anyan ahetunan api tarayanta. Now compare between the two. Our realized soul spending rest of his life in the hills and the caves and the forest all by himself enjoying the fruits of realization by himself. And the other person lives in this world like a life-giving spring and spending, speaking of hope and joy to the world weary people and helping them to go across. Who is the better of the two? The fourth shloka tells you, gives an example. A person after his realization, he doesn't think of too much of himself. He doesn't outspeak others because there is no other for him. He is everywhere. Separateness, distinction has disappeared totally. So he doesn't show himself off. He is as modest, as humble, as the humblest of the humble, modestest of the modest. A. Ativadi Nabhavati. Sa Atma Krida. He plays, playful, like a child, joyfully playing. Playing with whom? With himself in different forms. Krida means you need tools and tackles to play. Cricket is a game. And Rati is enjoying the memory of that thing. You don't need anything, you sit quietly and enjoy. He, when he is active in the world, he sees himself everywhere and enjoys their company. And when he is left alone, he is enjoying his own true origin. Atma Krida Atma Rati. And when he is active, he is active. And there is a purpose in his madness. What is the purpose in his madness? Kriyavan. His activity is manifestation of the divine qualities that human tends to forget under the pressure of their misidentifying themselves with the, what they are not with this world. 
ध्यान ऐश्वर्य क्रियावाद ऑल द सिक्स क्वालिटीज ऑफ द डिवाइन षड भग संपन्न भगवान ऑल द सिक्स एक्सेलेंसेस मैग्निफिसेंसेस मैजेस्टी ऑफ हिज पर्सनैलिटी ही थ्रोज अराउंड इन द होल वर्ल्ड एश सच अ पर्सन ब्रह्म विदाम वरिष्ठ He is the best of all the Brahma Vidas that you can find around, and you need not go very far. Look at Swami Vivekananda. He had every right. He had every reason to live his own life in the hills and the dales and the caves. he had the right but because of the teachings of his guru that noren lok shikha dibe noren desh videshe haak padbe this is his literal idiomatic village language noren will be teacher of the human kind and noren with a stentorian voice will speak to the whole world and what did noren do through the scriptures he found out who is the best specimen of a realized soul a karma yogi who develops the art within himself to see the divine everywhere and serve the society as a servant of god and he sees god everywhere therefore there is no place of his egoistic consideration his ego has param samyam upayati his ego has merged with that sublime oneness this is how we have studied the first four shlokas now let us go to the fifth before we go to the fifth i will give you certain example and please remember that otherwise the intricate hidden meaning of this shloka will not be graspable by you you will think it's a euphoria play with words no it is a guideline to your sadhana now the example is if you have any knowledge of music i will explain to you from that musicology there are string musics musical instruments string music instruments the guitar the sitar the tandu the uh, what is that swarod and the ratandur and there are so many other string instruments now there is a particular pure note you will find before that string instrument player plays it he gets the standard note and he plays his strings and tune it with them and if you are a bit interested and if not you please do this experiment for yourself a musician wait till he plays the pure note and there is a sympathetic resonance in that chord which he doesn't touch that resonance resonates in this one which are tuned in same frequency in english language it is told as sympathetic vibration now i am what i am fully involved with the world 
though I am involved, I have by my karma phala, by the guidance of my guru, and ultimate by the grace of God, I have developed that idea to be one with God. What is the instrument? The instrument is your antakarana, your inner organ, your chitta. I would say roughly or grossly describe your total personality, storehouse of all your past activities. Now, the teacher says, see God everywhere. It doesn't ring a bell. Why? Your mind is not tuned to that idea which is expressed by the word, see God everywhere. These words gives you an idea and your mind is not tuned enough that it sympathetically vibrates. So dears, they are said as Sahakari Sadhanani, ancillary disciplines. You don't reach your research studies without going to kindergarten, primary, medium, secondary, higher secondary, college, graduation, post-graduation research. For you now to be one with God is to be one with God, with your experiencing, not only listening. Even if you listen, a bubble starts growing in you and it doesn't form, it bursts. Why? Because you are not tuned to it. Your musical instrument, that particular chord, is not tuned to that pure tone. Therefore, I'm playing that tone and there is no sympathetic vibration in that tone. Sahakari sadhanani are those sympathetic vibrations. Satyena labhya stapasahiya satma Samyajnana Brahmacharjena Nityam, the fifth shloka. All of a sudden, he comes down. He was talking about the best among the realized souls, and all of a sudden he says, Look, you have to be truthful. Your knowledge must not be impaired by anything. It must be crystal clear, rock solid understanding. Samyajnana. Tapasya, you have to be very, very determined in your efforts. Brahmacharya Nanittam, keep your body, mind absolutely pure. Celibacy, both physically, mentally, rationally. No thought of that. What are all these? You are talking about Brahmanga, the best of the lot, and you bring me down here. He brings you down here with a purpose. The purpose is to help you to tune your mental cord. You tune your mind in such a manner. The Guru says, Tattvamasi. And you say, I am Atma Brahma, Aham Brahmasmi. Immediately the cord takes up the resonance. This is what is the starting of the instructive part of the Upanishads. We'll see to it in greater detail later on, but remember this introduction. Without this introduction, 
you will not be able to connect the flow of thoughts that has been developed up to the fourth shloka and from fifth shloka it is totally instructive informative thank you dears thank you ever so much we'll get into the depth of this study fifth shloka in the next stop thank you om shanti 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 hi hari hi om tat sat shri ram krishna arpanamastu